In this video, we're going to connect our conversation about forces and finding the net force with our understanding of motion from our last unit using the kinematic equations and calculating acceleration. Uh, ultimately, this is going to lead us uh, into a conversation about Newton's second law, one that you might be familiar with. And typically, if you're familiar with this law, you might remember it as uh, an equation. We are going to talk about where that equation comes from today and how Newton's first law is actually defined by Newton himself. So to understand Newton's definition of this first law, we need to understand a concept known as momentum. This is actually going to be a topic in a later unit. So this is a little preview of what we're going to see then. But you probably have a general idea of what momentum is. It's an object's tendency to continue moving. If inertia is an object's tendency to keep doing whatever it's doing, inertia in motion basically is this idea of momentum. So this truck doesn't want to stop moving. And we can quantify that momentum by calculating the mass times the velocity, kilograms times meters per second. So the heavier it is, the more momentum. The faster it's moving, the more momentum. Newton's second law is based on this idea of momentum. And it's a pretty wordy uh, mouthful here. It's the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the unbalanced force acting on that body and takes place in the same direction. So let's parse this out in terms of how this is actually uh, an equation. Um, so if we're going to put this in equation form, the unbalanced force is our net force. That's what we talked about in the last, uh, the last video. This is proportional to the rate of change of momentum. Momentum is mass times velocity. So the change in momentum is the final momentum, mass times final velocity, minus the initial momentum, mass times initial momentum. So that's the momentum it ends with, subtracted by the momentum it started with to get the change. To find the rate of change, you just divide that change by t, the time. This equation, uh, isn't too bad, but we can simplify this further if we have an understanding of our kinematic equations. One of those kinematic equations that we used in the last unit was this one, V is equal to U plus AT. This can be rearranged to solve for A. A is equal to V minus U divided by T. You might notice that this format looks really similar to this equation. Uh, I can actually get this out of there if I take M uh, out of this uh, fraction. So if I just divide everything by m and just put m outside, I get m times the quantity of v minus u over t. v minus u over t is the same thing as acceleration. So we can actually simplify this by instead of using v, u, and t, just substituting in the acceleration. So we end up with mass times acceleration. The equation that you are probably familiar with in Newton's second law is the net force is equal to mass times the acceleration, F equals MA. So if force is equal to mass times acceleration, let's just define the symbols and units that we have to use in order to make this equation work. Our symbol for force is just a capital F. Uh, we'll see later on, we'll use subscripts with F all the time. Really, this is referring to the net force, the overall force that's acting on the object is equal to mass times acceleration but we'll just describe it F here. Um, units are Newtons. Mass is represented with an M, lowercase m, in units of kilograms, not grams. You have to use kilograms. And acceleration, uh, A is in units of meters per second squared. We should be familiar with that from our last unit. Now, we mentioned in the last video that Newton is a derived unit. This is its derivation. So Newtons are equal to a unit of mass times a unit of acceleration, kilograms times meters per second squared. The easiest way to see this in action is just to like try it, to, to give an example of one. So say you have a motorcycle, a shiny new motorcycle with an engine that's capable of 2,450 Newtons of force. Uh, if it has a max acceleration of 15 meters per second, what is its mass in kilograms? Here I have F, I have A. I'm going to use my F equals MA relationship and solve for M, the mass. I do that by just dividing A on both sides. So I end up with M is equal to F divided by A. 2,450 divided by 15 gives me a mass of about 163 kilograms. So just using this equation, 
is one of the easiest things that we're going to do all year in this class. Just identifying what you need and what you have to solve for the unknown. Where this gets a little bit more exciting is when we start combining it with some other skills. So let's say we have this 100 kilogram block and it's accelerating because of these forces. To find acceleration, I'm going to use F equals MA. Just solve that for A. To do that, I need to know the mass, this 100 kilograms, and the force. In this case, there are four forces that are acting on the object, so I want to simplify this down into one net force. To do that, I'm going to do the same thing that I did in the last video. First, looking at my vertical forces, this 600 and 200 simplify down to one vertical force upward at 400 newtons. This 100 and 400 horizontally simplify to a 300 newton force going to the, the right here. Now, I can take these and combine them. Again, I'm not combining them by just adding them together. The net force isn't 700 because they are not acting in the same direction. Instead, I know my net force is going to be upward at an angle here. And to find that net force, I'm going to make a triangle. So I'm just going to move this vector over and then connect those with the hypotenuse here. And that hypotenuse is going to be a 3, 4, 5 triangle, 300, 400, 500. Um, so my net force here is going to be 500 newtons. So just for clarity's sake, I'm going to make a diagram with just that net force. Um, that's the only one I need because this is actually a combination of these two. So it wouldn't be right to draw it on the same picture as those two because that would be doubling up that force, whereas really the net force is just 500 newtons. So now I actually have enough to find the accelerating object because the acceleration is the force divided by the mass. Force is 500, mass is 100. 500 divided by 100 is 5 meters per second squared. All right. So that means uh, that this Newton's second law is going to be really important to us because it's the bridge between two important categories of physics. The physics of forces, what we just did uh, defining uh, if you have many forces, what the net force is on an object, and the physics of motion. Uh, motion is the unit that we just finished up. Uh, and you might remember one of the key parts of this was using the kinematic equations. Um, and these kinematic equations uh, can help us define the motion, especially of an accelerating object. Newton's second law fits right in between both of these. It's the overlapping part. Whereas the forces can be found using net force, that force can be shown here in this F equals MA to find the acceleration, which can then be used to find some stuff with motion, or vice versa. You can find the acceleration, use that to find something to do with the force. See a couple examples of this. These are the equations that we'll be pulling from. Here we have a race car that has a mass of 710 kilograms. It starts from rest, travels 40 meters in three seconds. The car is uniformly accelerated during the entire time. What is the net force applied to it? If I'm asked to find net force, it's a pretty safe bet that I need to use this equation. F is equal to MA. The net force is the mass times acceleration. Here I know the mass, that's 710 kilograms, but none of these are acceleration. It starts from rest, that's the initial velocity, zero. Uh, travels 40 meters, that's the displacement. And three seconds, that's the time. Um, nowhere in here does it give me the acceleration, but if I know those three, I can find acceleration. Let's plug in what I know, what I want to find, and then what I don't need. V is the variable. I don't need the final velocity, which helps me narrow down the equation that I want. I'm going to use this one here. S is equal to UT times one half AT squared. If U is zero, this UT term cancels itself out. So I end up with S is equal to one half times AT squared. Plugging in what I know, I get 40 is equal to 1 half a3 squared. Rearranging, solving for a, I'll get 8.89 meters per second squared. Now that I have acceleration and I always had mass, I can find the net force. Um, net force is related to both of these. If I wanted to have the race car go faster, have a higher acceleration, I would need more net force. But since this is the acceleration here, I can plug that in 710 times 8.89 will give me a net force of 6,311 newtons.
Here's another example. You slide a 0.2 kilogram hockey puck on the ice at a velocity of 12 meters per second. After three seconds, the force of friction causes it to stop. What is the force of friction? Here, I know uh, the initial velocity, I know the time, and I know that the final velocity must be zero. So plugging those numbers in here um, and trying to find acceleration so that I can ultimately find the force, I know that I won't need displacement. That narrows it down to this equation here. Using this equation and F equals MA, I'd like you to calculate all the way through to find the force of friction. All right, your steps here, plugging in what you know, you got zero is equal to 12 times A3, A times three. Subtract 12 on both sides, divide by three, you get negative 12 divided by three is negative four meters per second squared. In this case, the negative just means is an acceleration in the opposite direction of the um, initial velocity. Plug that into your F equals MA, you get 0.2 times negative four is a negative 0.8 uh, newtons. Again, this negative is just indicative of the direction. It just means that the force is counteracting the motion, which friction will always do, and we'll see that in our next lesson. So if we know that net force is related to acceleration, it means that any time that we have an ex a net force that isn't zero, so the forces don't fully cancel, there will be acceleration. It doesn't mean that an object is moving. It means that an object's motion is changing. So not only is it moving down the road, it's getting faster or getting slower as it goes. Um, and we can quantify that by saying A is equal to F divided by M. That's just a, a rearranging of F equals MA. Along the same lines, if an object is in equilibrium, so all the forces cancel out to give us a net force of zero, that means that acceleration is zero. Um, this is the only way that A can equal F over M. If F is zero, anything zero divided by mass is always going to give you zero. Um, so this means that object is not accelerating. That means one of two things. One, the obvious one, is that an object could not be moving. Not moving is not accelerating. It's not getting faster. It's not getting slower. It's just not moving. Um, and it's pretty easy to think of that being in equilibrium. If you're standing at a stop sign, gravity's pulling you down, the road is pushing you up, everything cancels, you're in equilibrium. Another example of equilibrium, though, that we don't always think of right off the bat is that you can have constant velocity and still be in equilibrium. You can be moving at 80 miles per hour down the highway if your cruise control is on and you're not changing that velocity. It means that you're in equilibrium. The, the forces are all canceling out to make it so that you're not speeding up and you're not slowing down. Because if you were speeding up, slowing down, you, there would have to be a net force. Since you are constant, your acceleration is zero and so is your net force. So that leaves us with these takeaways. You should be able to describe Newton's second law in terms of momentum. Uh, you won't have to derive that equation, but know that Newton's second law is more than just F equals MA. It's that a net force changes your momentum. Uh, you should be able to calculate the force given mass and acceleration or calculate acceleration given force and mass. Basically, F equals MA, solve for an unknown. You should be able to combine Newton's second law with kinematic equations uh, to take force and bring it to a final velocity or vice versa. And then explain the connection between constant velocity and balanced forces. You don't have to be stopped if you are in equilibrium. You could be moving, it's just at a constant rate.